Hey, uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us here tonight um, for another session of the 2020 IVCCA virtual training program. Uh, if we haven't met before, my name is Jillian Hawkins. I am the Assistant Executive Director here at the IVCCA. Um, before we get started, before I introduce our trainer for the evening, I'm just going to go over a couple rules. Uh, tonight's training will last about an hour, including time for question and answer. Uh, so try to be present during the whole training, um, put away distractions, get a drink, to drink of water now if you need it. Um, I try to be present for the whole training since we don't have a whole lot of time tonight here. Uh, this training is being recorded, so if there's something that you miss or want to go back and review, um, we will have this recorded and up on our YouTube page and you'll receive a link to that recording as well as any uh, additional training materials. Um, please be respectful to other participants. Everybody's going to be remained um, muted during the training, um, but if you do have questions, the chat box is open. Please put any questions that you have in the chat box. Um, and please feel free to ask any questions that you may have. There's no stupid questions. Um, we'll try to get through as many questions as we can, um, but if there's something that, that you ask and we, we don't get to tonight, um, we will certainly follow up with you via email. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce, uh, we're joined here tonight by Genevieve Thayers. Genevieve founded the Chicago-based New Founders Conference, which brought in over 2,000 major political leaders to Chicago between the years of 2016 and 2020. She's the co-executive producer and political tech trainer on Run the Series and is the author of Tech Yourself, the first ever political tech playbook for candidates running for office. Uh, she's a member of the IDCCA Leadership Circle, and we are very thankful that she could join us here tonight to share her expertise on using tech in politics and campaigns. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Genevieve. Thanks, Jillian. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Genevieve. Uh, Jillian, um, thanks for the intro. Uh, there's one more thing I'll add. Um, I actually build uh, tech companies, too. Um, so I built SitterCity.com, which has, um, we've served over 10 million users at this point. It's kind of like a Match.com, but for parents and caregivers. Um, and um, so very, very familiar with tech systems. And I'm on the board of 1871 in Chicago. Um, since I've built my tech company, SitterCity.com, which is now like 19 years old, I ran it as CEO for nine years and then stepped up to the board. I've invested in 15 more women in tech. Um, so some of you might know me from last year. I did a training and then I said, who are women that are running for office? Raise your hands. And then I donated to every single one. So <laughs> sorry, guys, a little scared towards the ladies, but really excited you're all here. Can I ask really, really quickly, um, who's running for office and who is more on the county side? Who's running for office right now? Just, just yell out me. Oh, you know what? You're muted. You can't. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Jillian, what would you say? How many people here are running for office versus county? Is it 80-20, 75-25? Uh, I'm not sure, but if you if you want to reply in the chat box, the chat box is open. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Good, yeah. Yep. Okay, as expected, yep. A lot of people are running. Good, good. Then this training is for you. Um, those of you in the county, you're going to learn a lot of valuable things today. Well, I'm going to give you resources, many resources today, but feel free to ask a question at the end. Yep, 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 yeah, most of you are running. Feel free to ask a question at the end um, if you would like me to talk to you about how a county, how you would use that at the county level. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen, Jillian, is that okay? Yep, you should be able to now. Great. Uh, we just have one. Wonderful. Can you see my screen yet? Probably not. Strange. Share. Open system preferences. This is going to be awesome. I'm going to wipe out on a tech thing <laughs> before I can even teach you about anything tech. Give me a second. This is so annoying. Okay. I'm not sure why, Jillian. I don't seem to be able to share the screen. So um, do you have access to the email I sent you before? Yeah, uh, I can go ahead and share that presentation now. Thank you. And I'll just say move slide when we want to move forwards, okay? Start with the PowerPoint, not the PDF, okay? 
great. This is what we call in tech a, a workaround. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna bring you through today um, a series of things that you're going to get after this training. It is, I was telling Jillian, um, the Tech Yourself Guide um, is a 200 page guide. <laughs> it covers an enormous amount of information. Um, anything you need to know is in there, but I cannot teach it to you in less than four hours. So what I will do um, is I am going to go through everything that it, it covers, then I will go through for you what to do in a pandemic. <laughs> so we wrote the guide, we released it at the New Founders Conference last year. Um, and if you wanna move through the next slides, uh, Jillian, it's like the next four, um, the New Founders Conference, it's so wonderful. We just merged it with Higher Ground Labs, but we brought over 2000 leaders into Illinois over the last four years. Um, and it's been incredible. The leaders of every major group, senators, the Parkland kids, out of this think tank came, you know, 24 new tools and 11 white papers and so many things. Um, one of those things was Tech Yourself. Um, I was the donor and the master editor for it. It cost about 60000 to do, and I'll talk you through a little bit more why we did this in a minute. But um, the Tech Yourself Guide was released at the New Founders Conference last fall. So the reason I'm going to add a little addendum for you is this March, we all went into a pandemic. I'm sure it's been real fun for everyone. I cut my own hair this morning. <laughs> did a terrible job so that's why it's up but um yeah it's been it's been interesting so we i will actually bring you through um the eight page addendum as well at the end of this that talks about what to do virtually because none of us can knock on a door now you know all right so why did we build the tech yourself guide which by the way after this you will be receiving everything this powerpoint you will receive the 200 page tech yourself guide the whole book. Um, you will receive some resources, some actual, you know, handouts that I usually will, I'll show one of them to you on this. And then you will receive the eight page addendum for the pandemic. So nobody needs to take notes. Just let me outline for you what you're about to get. Okay. So there were two major things over the New Founders Conference that became incredibly clear, which is why one of the many solutions we rolled out was Tech Yourself. Um, all of the tech information that we need to win a campaign because we are on the left and because we rely, frankly, way too much on overpriced consultants, it's locked up in the higher levels. And when you're running at the county seat, when you are running for, you know, a city council, it's not available to you. You're not going to be able to raise enough to be able to get that consultant and get that info. So the reason that I plunked down $60,000 and, and 11 experts, you know, these experts were ones that were charging a ton, but they wanted to emancipate the info. The reason that we did that was because we need to liberate the information at all levels. Everyone running at the lower levels is insanely valuable and you are the future especially you ladies, but you have to be running smart. And if you're not at that level where you're running for like, you know, state representative or above, and that's only in some states, you're just out of luck. There were two things that people didn't understand that were the biggest two things that we touch on in the guide. If I were to say there are two major thought areas, the first is that nobody really gets how to allocate digital spend. This is way more than just buying an ad on Facebook, although that's a perfect start, right? So there's a whole beautiful chapter written by J.B. Pritzker's former campaign manager, Megan Clayson, walking you through the whole thing. But 40%, 40% of your campaign budget should be on digital spend. That's the first piece. The second piece is that there are over 300 tech tools out there and nobody has any idea what to use. No one. <laughs> and I'm sure at the lowest levels, I already see some people waving their heads. No idea. You're lost. Everybody's lost. I went in as a tech CEO. And by the way, I can barely plug in things half the time. So no question is too dumb, right? No question. I'm usually the one crawling around on the floor looking for the outlet. But like, seriously, there is too, there are too many tools and there's no map. So we built the map. I'm going to bring you through it, but we separated campaigns into five levels, bands one, two, three, four, and five. And then we told you exactly which tools to use at each level. So for example, at band one, which is the lowest band, you're going to use 12 tools. At band three, 
you're probably going to use 24 to 27 tools. And at band five, which is basically presidential or some large gubernatorial races, you're going to use 34 tools, right? This will outline exactly what you need, and I'll talk more about it as we go. But this was the focus of the guide, tackling these two questions and then wrapping around it everything else people, people don't know. Let's move on, Jillian, to the next slide. So um, this is the guide. Ha, ha, ha. We can move on. <laughs> love not having the ability to click the arrow here. Okay, so I want to talk you through who made this. 11 veteran campaign managers did this. I don't know if any of you know Michael Kurtz, Mario Piscatella, um, Jake Braun, Beth Becker, legends. And what I'm really proud of is that these are the people that were charging an enormous amount, but also really worried about the fact that everybody at the county level was wiping out. You are the future. You need to be enabled. So sad to say, I can't teach you everything now. I don't have four hours, but I can give you the book and outline everything that's in it. And we're all in a quarantine. Put yourself in the bath read it, read the sections that you need. I will also talk you through, there are online videos and there are other resources, but really, if, if you're gonna read one thing, read this book. Um, we had five expert reviewers, we had six associated tech political hubs, so New Founders is now part of Higher Ground Labs. Um, Higher Ground Labs was a big, big piece of this. National Democratic Training Committee was a big, big piece of this, Vote Run Lead. We put this together with many, many different parties. Um, we had eight major tool champions I'll talk about in a minute. We have 25 distribution partners, National Democratic Training Committee, Vote Run Lead, Vote Mama, four states. I was out in Santa Fe pitching this to all the county chairs. So the good news is, is we've trained at least 1,200 people on this so far. Um, and now more with you all. Um, and over 50,000 was funded for the guide. So let's, let's move on. There's a password here to access the guide. You don't need that. I'm sending it to you in a Google Drive. So just click the link and download. Okay, so what do we cover in the guide? So that you know these sections are here, so when you sit down in your easy chair with your tea, you know, you, you can zoom into whatever section you want or just read the whole thing. We cover basic frameworks for how tech fits into campaigns and the difference between data tools and analytics. I, I get confused, so I don't know why anyone else wouldn't get confused, you know, and I'm a former tech CEO. This is hard stuff. Um, we talk about how to calculate digital spend in four areas, because there are four areas of digital spend, list building, persuasion, mobilization, and GOTV. Depending on your district, you're going to be putting money into these four buckets on your digital spend side. Now, we talk about why and when you would put you know, certain amounts of money into each bucket, and then how to actually do the spend. If you have a tech-savvy friend, hand this book to them and make them your digital manager. You do not need to be more than good at Facebook to do this. That's what we've done in the book. So, you know, again, emancipation of the information was important. We talk about tech tools and which ones to use at varying levels. I will go into this a little bit more, but these... Um, there's bands one to five. There are five of these. Most of you are probably running in bands one or two. Um, so you can take a look. It's right in the book telling you which band you're in, but we'll go through it in a minute and it will explain to you, I'll explain to you how to decipher which tools. Um, there were standouts in terms of tactics that worked last year, deep canvassing, texting, relational organizing. We talk about why those were standouts. We talk about how to organize your team around tech tools so that you don't have crashes between one tool and another. Um, each one of these is basically a chapter, right? And they're not too long. So, you know, we put a lot of graphics in and, and it's, it's not a crazy read. It's not deep tech. It's, it's written, you know, I master edited it, right? And I'm a mother of eight-year-old twins. Like, it's super easy read. It, it, will, it will get you there, you know? Um, I don't like fancy words because I don't understand them, right? Um, uh, we talk about how to get the best data and how to modify bad data when you're in a district, which is something you probably know a little more about, but we had just an amazing data analyst, so he... Mario just went for it, you know, put a section in. We talk about what to ask tech consultants and tool builders because a lot of them are going to sell you the moon and then you're going to crash into a wall. Uh, basic cybersecurity, how to protect your campaign, how to engage and message to millennials in your district who really don't communicate in a way that many of us understand at all. You don't have to get a TikTok, but we're going to like, you know, talk you through some other basics that you probably should be on. And then we have free resource and training guides at the end. So, 
I cannot go through all of these. Much as I would absolutely love to, I can't. But there's a chapter for every one of these in the book that you will get, you know, 10 minutes after this call or whenever, whenever Jillian can send it. But she's got everything and you can download it and read away. Um, Jillian, let's go to the next slide. When I say I don't like fancy words, by the way, I mean I don't like consultant speak. My twin sister is a consultant and half the words she says just make me want to like throw my water at her. It's just me. It's just a thing. <laughs> I'm a builder. <laughs> so tool partners that helped us put this together, Voter Circle, Team App, and Power Engine, NGP Van, they basically were just really, really helpful during this entire guide. However, um, I, wanted, I wanted to be clear, this guide it markets, it tells you um, three options for everything that you'd want to do. Uh, when we talk about texting, we give you three tools. When we talk about uh, relational organizing, we give you three tools. Um, we mention every tool and we do not give preference for one over the other. What I like about these tool partners is they invested anyway, not invested, but they, they helped us anyway in the creation um, because the overall cost of the guide was 80,000. So they did about 20 of that um, and I do the rest. Let's move on, Julie. Oh, and over on the right there are the states and the, the partners that are distributing this. The guide is huge. Um, we know that 200 pages is a lot. So um, if you go to techyourself.org or frankly in the, in the, um, the um, Google Drive that I'm sending you through uh, Jillian after this, um, you will see uh, sub guides. You will see one pagers like this. Uh, you will see, um, you know, these are called the tech tool stack sheets. Um, you know, I put this PowerPoint in there for you. And then we send out things occasionally, like when the pandemic hit, we sent out the eight pager that was like, here, here's how to do all this in a pandemic. That was fun. We whipped that one together in 24 hours, but you know, it's, it's all there in there for you. Uh, okay, let's move to the next slide. Okay, so here's an example of band one of a tech tool stat sheet, tech tool stack sheet. So like I said, there's, there's actually five of these. What we did for campaigns was we actually broke them into five levels. Band one, for example, is uh, races from five, where the, where the amount raised for the race is 5,000 to 25,000. 25, so this might be your county seat or your school board. Uh, band two is races where the amount raised is 26,000 to 300,000. So that might be uh, an aldermanic or a small uh, state senate. Um, band three is 300,000 to 750,000. So that might be a large state senate race, smaller congressional races in certain states, et cetera. Now, um, what we've done is we have a very simple key. And again, you're getting this. So I'm just going to kind of talk you through how to decipher it. Um, we have three colors. If you see something in blue, it's weakly recommended for you at this level. If you see something in purple, it's moderately recommended for you at this level. And if you see something in red, it is strongly recommended for you at this level. So for example, we're looking at band one. You're gonna have to have a data source, you know? I mean, you're either gonna get that through your state party or through NGP van. You're just gonna need to do that. You're probably gonna need some stock footage, right? You know, when you send out an email, you, uh, you know, might wanna have a Facebook page. You're probably gonna wanna try Twitter or Instagram. You're gonna need an email management tool. You're gonna need, uh, you know, content testing and optimization. So if you run a Facebook ad, you're probably gonna wanna be able to log in and see how many people looked at it, right? You're you might need an event tool. You might need um, a data tracking tool like minivans. So these are the things that you'll see in here popping out. Now, like I said, band one, there's actually only 12 tools that you need. It's not 300. It's just 12. Band two, you're going to need more like 18, you know, 16 to 18, depending on your race. Band three, you're going to need up to 24. But it's not, it's not all 300, which I think the problem is we see the sea of tools and we freak out. It's very, very scary. So on here, I've given you my email as well in the email that, in the, the message you'll get after this. If you have any questions at all, or you're just like, there's, I, I'm in band one and you're telling me I need this and I don't think I do, I mean, send it to me. You have my email and you can do that, but it should be very clear from here what you need. 
the categories you see, we actually broke out, and this was not me, this was Higher Ground Labs. So there were so many different organizations that worked on this, but they were the highest level in the country. And DNC opened our conferences, you know, every year at New Founders. So, I mean, the best minds worked on this. The, the categories of tool, um, they had seven uh, Higher Ground Labs, uh, messaging and media tools, data analytics and modeling tools, field tools, it's a biggie, uh, research tools, fundraising tools, cybersecurity tools, and then team organization and communication tools. So again, in each category, we're going to show you what is strong, uh, moderately, and weakly recommended. Okay? Uh, I'll keep going, but I am here to answer questions at the end. Uh, let's, let's move on to the next slide. <clears throat> So at techyourself.org, T-E-C-H, uh, yourself.org, um, we also have a persuasion spend calculator. It's a great site. We have tons of stuff. Uh, you're going to get it all in a Google Drive, but you can also download it from the site. Your persuasion spend is the hardest level of spend to figure out. Megan Clayson, who worked on J.B. Pritzker's team for governor and who is a legend in the industry, was on me to make this. So we finally did put it together. And we used um, people from Trailblazers and Priorities Pack to build the back end. It's so simple. If you're trying to figure out what your persuasion spend should be in your district and in your audience size, your location, your targeting types, and your ad partners, which honestly for most of us is Facebook only. Um, and you know what, if you're unsure, your targeting type, just leave it at addressable, right? And click calculate. It will tell you what your spend should be. Um, this might, you know, you guys are the CEOs of your campaign, so you don't necessarily know or need to know exactly what your persuasion spend is, but your field organizer is going to die when they see this of happiness. So this tool is right there on techyourself.org. Plug the four in and it gives you an answer. Um, please use it. You know, it's one of the many things that we've made there to make your life easier. Uh, Jillian, can you move on? Okay, great. We also have uh, sub guides. Um, some of the county chairs were telling us to um, make sub guides. We can move on, Jillian. This one is not a big deal. But, you know, should you want a little you know, hint of something instead of the whole 200 page guide. We have that. That's more for the county chair or that's county chairs. Yes, but the state parties wanted that. Okay. So we have as well at techyourself.org. That's the only thing that I didn't include in the Google Drive. You're going to get 17 um, virtual classes. Um, some of us are visual learners and we're aware of that. Fine. So this is what we made for you. Um, there's so much that isn't being taught. Um, at any level, but especially at the lower levels, that we've tried to make, you'll see us over and over trying to crunch down, crunch down, crunch down the information. So like when we get to the point where we have a one sheeter like this, it's beautiful. I mean, I just sang an alleluia when this thing was, was done, you know? Um, but uh, some of the things you just need to, you know, in terms of like how to buy online ads, you just need, you need someone standing there talking at you for 17 minutes, which Megan Clayson does in one of these videos. There are 17 videos and they basically take the information in the guide and they condense it even further and they give you a quick hit. So if you happen to be somebody who's very visual, try the videos first. I do one, Nicole Johnson did one. I mean, rock stars all over the place in these, really, really fun people. So check out a video if you are intimidated by the book. Um, some of us love to, I love to read the 200 pager first, you know, some of us don't. So this can help you wade in the water if you want. Uh, okay, I think we're almost at the end of the PowerPoint. Let's just see where we are. The guide is updated yearly. We actually were on the phone last uh, week about the actual update for this year because our update for this year got um, hijacked by the pandemic. So the update with this year was like how to do everything without actually making physical contact with anyone or breathing the same air. Anyway, whatever. We also do have a digital campaign manager forum and several state party representatives, not representatives, like people that work in the office are in it and um, they're constantly sharing new learnings. So this info is super fresh, but it's, you know, continually freshened up, if that makes sense. Um, I believe the next slide is the thank you slide. So let's run over to the virtual pandemic guide. 
Um, and that's just a PDF. It's eight pages. I'll walk you through that. And then I, I just want you to ask your questions because there's probably so many things that people want to know. Give me just a minute to share that and just a reminder to people that if you have any questions, the chat feature there at the bottom of your screen, um, go ahead and type those questions and we'll go through those at the end. I think it's hilarious that my screen won't share. <laughs> I actually just got a new computer and I was not thinking in time. Um, can I ask you, Jillian, just to bring the screen to about 60% instead of 100? Thanks. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Just so that each, each one's a slide. Yay. We might want to do that just one more time. There we go. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Okay. So what do we do in the pandemic hit? Cause 2020 just loves us. Lots going on. Um, we released this addendum to our guide that was made by these same exact experts that um, made the guide. Um, and covered in this is how to do all the things you now can't do virtually. So let's flip to that. Oh, uh, I will say um, Higher Ground Labs, though, because New Founders merged into Higher Ground Labs right before this, Higher Ground Labs um, created this with us. So. Teams can't mate, candidates can't go out, <laughs> door knocking is totally dead, totally dead. You can't even leave a flyer. Um, rallies are a no-go. Fundraisers require people. <laughs> Everyone's in financial trouble, all is not lost. So here's what we put together to kind of talk you through how to do things virtually. Um, so let's move to the next slide. Uh, some of this is chunky. I'll try to walk you through it. So first of all, how do you make your team effective at all? Uh, hopefully you've all figured out Zoom. Um, if you haven't, really check it out. It's awesome. They have extension packages and you can do quite a lot, but virtual meetings, uh, you know, we're on Zoom right now, so obviously everybody knows about it. But if you're trying to manage a team, uh, Slack is terrific for team communications. Almost all of us use it. Everyone from Move On to Women's March to Indivisible, everyone's remote with Slack teams. Um, Signal, I don't know if a lot of you are using this, but it's encrypted IM. It's massively useful if you're a candidate and you just don't feel like dealing with attacks from somebody who, you know, I mean, if you're at level three or above, you're going to get hacked at some point. So Encrypted IM is, is very helpful. Divi and Warchest are budgeting tools that I have seen campaigns use with real success. It just helps everybody spend within their limits and not over, which we all know is super. Uh, G Suite for sharing documents. You know, you're going to get a Google Drive thing from me later. So everything here, you know, there's just basically a, a live link um, in the doc you'll get. Click on it and you'll go to a tutorial about how to use the tool. Three minutes later, you'll be an expert. Yay. Um, let's move on to the next, uh, next slide. Okay, so... For good virtual meetings, we just added this part because a lot of people were diving into the virtual world and, and it's hard. It's really hard. I can't even get my screen to share. And this is ridiculous, right? My kid's running up the stairs. <laughs> Welcome to the world. But, you know, um, when using Zoom or any conference tool, make sure that your call is more about the community. So, for example, I am checking out the chat the whole way through this. Yay. You know, it's it's... I don't want to talk at you for much longer. I'm going to try to go two more minutes and then answer questions. It's hard, you know, to have like four hour long diatribes on this. You know, it needs to be community. It's not just meeting for your team. You can also host town halls on this. I don't know if you've tried. The extension package can bring you up to, you know, I've seen 800 people on a call and it works. Um, you know, uh, videos can really spice up a call. Presentations can really spice up a call, scaring your, sharing your screen. Um, highly recommending graphics charts, et cetera. You know, we have a PowerPoint here, et cetera. Um, Canva, PicMonkey, these are very simple places where you can just get you know, royalty free images to put things into your, you know, into your presentations to keep everybody awake. Snappa and Visme are easy infographics and charts. You just quickly enter your data, bam, it's suddenly visual. So just a thought, but good virtual meetings is kind of a big deal when you have a team. Uh, let's move on. So door knocking's dead. Texting tools are the new door knocking, just for any of you out there doing that. Hustle and get through are the two that I really recommend. I don't actually think there's, there was a third, but I don't know. It, we have these two that we've pulled out because they seem to be the ones that almost everyone's using. Um, so 
the problem with this, right? So it's hard to go door to door. People really can't do it anymore. But the problem is most of us uh, have the information um, for only about 30% of our district when it comes to cell phone number and email. This is why you're gonna to have to be the team that goes out and bites the bullet and innovates here. Um, my suggestion to Dan Kovats with ILDCCA was go post a flyer on all the doors that you don't have the information for and just ask them to give you the information. But having only access to 30% of your district using Get Through or Hustle as a texting tool is very, very hard. That said, um, I hope you've seen these texting tools. They're really incredible. I mean, it looks like a friend is texting you. It pops up on your phone and it's like, hey, Genevieve, are you going to JB's rally next week? And, you know, uh, what can we tell you to get you to go? You know, it looks very, very easy. On the back end of the tool, it, it's simple. Base, and we show visuals in, in the Tech Yourself Guide. But basically, you just, <laughs> you enter two pieces of info, maybe three, right? It's like the name of the person, hi, Genevieve, right? You know, are you going to blank, <laughs> you know, JB's rally next week in blank Springfield? <laughs> you know, what questions can I answer for you? I mean, it couldn't be simpler. You, you just fill in those three lines. Now, because it's a texting tool and because of certain laws and regulations, you then have to click submit to send it to everybody you have the access to. But if you're running for county, let's say you're running for county seat or school board, um, that might mean that you, you have to just click it like maybe 800 times. And that's 30% of your district getting, you know, I, I mean, probably not 30%, but that's a whole lot of people getting a test from you. Um, and it's basically a door knock. So I've seen um, Get Through and Hustle used very well to drive people to events. Now I'm seeing it take the place of door knocking. And this is all very new. Um, but you can ask the questions you would ask at somebody's door using these tools. So you can actually, you know, hack this and basically go into Hustle or Get Through and say, hi, you know, Rhonda, uh, you know, we know that you voted uh, Republican last year, but then Democrat the, the year before, you know, who are you voting for this year? And the answer comes through, you know, I mean, like you can get answers back from people because it sounds like a friend is writing them. And so you can then get into a conversation with Rhonda about what's going on. It's a little weird because you're at a computer, you're not at the door, but any question you'd ask at the door, you can ask through these tools. It's the same thing for anyone under the age of say, 34, this is more natural than a than a face-to-face -face interaction. So I urge you to think about that because, you know, I've seen massively beautiful conversations happening. Now, you do have to have a team, right? Your team that would go door to door, your team is going to be on hustle. And when somebody bites, if you don't get a reply to them within 24 hours, you lose them, right? So you got to get back to them pretty quickly and be like, oh, Rhonda, you said that you're voting for, I don't know, Lauren Underwood. That's super. What led you to that decision? You know what I mean? You got to keep you got to keep the conversation going, but it can happen through this medium. So uh, let's move on, but um, that's that's the skinny on that. Socially, a lot of people are adding social super teams. I mean, brushing up on social media, you've got to. You've got to. There's no other real way to get to people right now. I mean, phone dialers, nobody's yeah, is not answering their phones, right? I mean, we're all swamped. It's just the very tip of the iceberg. Texting is going to get you a lot further and social is going to do a ton for you, right? I mean, I have seen some hilarious stuff lately from politicians on TikTok and I love it. I mean, AOC's playing Farmville. <laughs> you want to get in on this. There's weird and wacky and fun ways to get to people. So, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, those are great starts, right? Just having a Facebook page. All of it's in the guide. I'm not going to go into it here. We literally just don't have the time. But we gave you a chart here that talks about who uses um, these different tools and um, how often they use it. And your, your districts might, you know, be more or less tech savvy, but at this point you cannot run a campaign if you're not on social media. I've actually seen a few people try. It's insane. Don't try it. It's just not going to work. It's going to make you look nuts and it's going to make you crazy. Um, so uh, Sprout Social, Hootsuite, I talk in here, you can read this, but there's a few ways where you can queue up your social media. So you've got stuff going out. You typically want to post, you know, anywhere from two to four times a day on Facebook, et cetera. Um, you can queue that up. 
so that a lot of that's just ready to go and it's firing out. This is your new, you know, um, volunteer job that you're giving to someone in your virtual office, right? They're keeping your channels fresh and exciting and vital and gathering more and more people in your district, right? Let's move on to the next slide. Sprout Social and Hootsuite are the tools I mentioned here. These are the ones that you're going to use to queue up stuff and see how many people actually looked at your post, right? But social media mavens will tell you, right, people that really know this, that you want to take a look now at relational organizing. Um, I wish I could see a show of hands at who has used relational organizing. There are three that I love. Um, Outreach Circle is slightly different from Team App and Outvote, but they're all really, really helpful. Um, what relational organizing is, is it basically allows you to take the social followings, right? I have, I don't know, 5,000 followers on Facebook. Take those social followings across, like say Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram of all your followers, your campaign followers and fans, and drop them on a map and pinpoint, oh, wow, you know, like I know I have 76 people in my district across my Facebook, my Twitter, and my Instagram, and they collectively know 3,042 people. And then of those 3,042 people that my people know, um, let's say 10% you know, of them are super connectors. They know 10 plus other people in my district. This is what a relational tool does. And then you start, it's kind of like a phone tree. You start like a social phone tree where you send a note, you just say, blah, 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 blah. this is what I want you, my friends and fans and followers and my campaign people to send out to all your connections. You just click a button that goes out to them and they click a button and it goes straight out to their followers. This is what relational organizing does, it's awesome. I urge you to use it because now that we are virtual and God knows when the vaccine is coming, you're just going to make people angry if you're out actually knocking on the door and you're not trying every other way to get to them first. So, uh, you know, presetting messaging is very possible in these tools. Um, making sure that the um, messaging is, you know, defined or sorry confined to your district is possible you can say send only to those in my district within a first or a second level connection think linkedin right it's like any of the people i know or any of the people they know right you just click those two out and say only in my district and it's actually really cool they use you know the latitude longitude lines within the country to to actually cut that district so that you can send just to them um and it's cool to see the social reach of your following so i won't talk forever on this but it will say it's very powerful. Uh, okay, uh, let's move on. I think we're there. Okay, the last thing is fundraisers and rallies, and then I wanna shut up and, and answer questions. Um, you can do these very well online, but you need to use the right tools. I love Twitch. If you take Twitch and you hook Act Blue into it, you can actually do a very successful rally. You can also use Zoom, but you have to do everything a little differently, right? So if you want to raise money online, uh, you have to have a slightly different draw than you would have at an at-person event. At an at-person event, you, the candidate, it's probably enough, you know, and maybe like one or two neighbors that, you know, called everyone into their house. When you're doing an online fundraiser, you have to think bigger, you have to plan a little further out, and you have to have somebody who's a real draw. So um, I just saw one of these two days ago with Peter Sagal as the MC. I saw one with Lynn manuel Miranda as the MC. That's probably you know, out of my reach, but like, that was cool, right? I went to that and um, Twitch looks like Zoom, similar interface, right? But the donate button is over on the right side. And as people donate, somebody like Lynn manuel Miranda or, you know, Peter Sagal was like, whoa, you know, like, Tony, thank you for that thousand dollars. Tony, everybody give him a round of applause. And you click a button and balloons go up on the screen. It's, it's kind of like being at a physical rally, but it's online. Um, you know, so Twitch, I know it's another tool. I hate introducing new tools, but think of it like Zoom, just with all the fun <laughs> balloons and, ability to raz Tony when he gives you a thousand dollars. It's just a bit more social and it's meant for these types of online events. Um, to be honest, I've even seen people holding events in Fortnite, which is incredible, but I, I, that's a bit far. You know, Twitch is, is great and a lot of us can learn it very quickly. And again, 
over here, if you click any of these links under the tool, it's a how-to video that just walks you through it, right? Three minutes later, you know what you're doing. Um, try not to make these one-sided. Try to make sure you have a famous personality. Call people out as they donate live and, you know, spread the love. You will do well. Um, you can plug any sort of, you know, donation box into Twitch, but most of us are going to be plugging in ActBlue, obviously. Um, when I say plug in, it's just literally, it's like, you know, please, what's your ActBlue page? You just enter it in and boom, you know, when somebody clicks to donate, it says, what do you want to donate? Boom, boom, and submit and you get a thousand dollars, right? But you just have to, you know, kind of type it into the box as needed when you set it up. Um, Jillian, do we have anything else? Yeah, okay. Let me stop here. This is so much. But it's all going to be in your hands right after the call. And you have my email. And this is what's available to you. I'm sorry I can't walk you through it now that we've, we've done the outline of what's available. But if you read the book and the eight-page addendum, you will be dangerous. And I want you all to be dangerous. What can I answer for you? So just a reminder to put any questions you have in the chat box uh, and we will be sending out a link to to the guide that Genevieve talked about. Um, we had a question here. You talked uh, a lot about um, texting tools and, and other social media tools. Are those tools that can be used on a laptop or do you need a smartphone? If you have a volunteer that doesn't have a smartphone, can they still help out with that? I recommend a laptop because when you're in hustle or something um, or, you know, any of these, when you're setting up an email and MailChimp or something, I, I can't type on this thing. I mean, first of all, I have like carpal tunnel, so I'm using like voice to text like my mother, right? You know, but then you have to go back and correct all the errors when you do voice. It's ridiculous. No, use a laptop for almost all of this, you know, um, Mac, PC, whatever. It's all fine. Um, however, where you're going to need your phone is for social media. Um, and look, you guys are all, um, you know, probably very savvy at your own social media, but you're going to have a social media manager probably, unless you do your own like Trump. So, hey, <laughs> everything's changed now. You can just fart out anything on this. But usually we're a little more careful than that on the left. And so, like, we'll, we'll have somebody that's like, hey, why don't you tweet this or tweet that? I do find that when I'm out doing something, you know, like new founders or whatever, I'll just be like, hey, this cool thing happened, boom. And you upload it right there to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or this is, this is fast, you know? So that's when you're gonna wanna use this and you're gonna wanna have like something good, like an iPhone or an Android. Just don't try to do this with a flip phone and no social media like my brother did, don't do that. <laughs> It did not work out well for George, but like, you know, make sure that, you know, you've got something like this and use this for social. Everything else, the other 90%, you're going to be using your laptop. Absolutely. I'm on mine right now. <laughs> Great. So, you, I mean, you talk about a lot of these new tools and new ways of organizing, but do you still see a role for um, traditional organizing like phone banks? I know a lot of campaigns are leaning on phone banks or when we get back to normal, um, is canvassing and phone banking still going to be part of that? Or do you see us moving more only to these new forms of communication? I will tell you, I get real pissed if someone calls me and it's not planned. And maybe I'm just a mom, but millennials was just like, you know, like five heads if you call them. I mean, they're just, they're so confused. And for anyone over, you know, I'm 42, so anyone over 42, I mean, you know, a call though is, is the acceptable way that you would assume someone would reach out. For anyone under like 38 though, I mean, honestly, they're just not having it. I will say, I don't, I don't, don't ask the phone bank. I mean, do the minimum there. But when you think about it in your head, I would really recommend after having, you know, a year of these experts pounding all this stuff in my head, right? My world was building actual consumer tech. Then I got all this in my head. It's one third phone banking or less. It's one third texting and it's one third social at least. That's the way I would think about it. And, you know, again, do, do what you need to with phone banking. If you've got something like um, minivan, right? Or there's another beautiful one. I can't remember what it's called, but like, you know, you got minivan, right? And you're looking and you're like, oh, this person, you know, I mean, again, for, for 
70% of your district, you don't have an email and you don't have a cell phone, so you can't text them. You, you have no other choice. You've got to call them. However, if you were wise, what I would do is I would call them and I would make the ask, like I would start now, even if your campaign is years away, I would start now and I'd be like, can we please have your, your cell phone or your email so that we can not bother you by phone? That's a message that will resonate right now. But just being like, hi, I'm Shirley, I'm running for blah. I mean, it just pisses me off. And I think other people do. Use it for the data gathering of that other 70% of data that you are missing to run a truly dangerous campaign, texting and email and social wise, if that makes sense. I hope I answered that well. Anyway, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so if you are, are a, a very small, very lean campaign, limited time, limited resources, limited people power, are there a few tools that you would recommend that really give the best bang for the buck or, or should definitely be ones um, that people should look into? Let's just look at, at the band one, right? Let's just look at band one. Um, and you really, this is seven categories and, and it's, you know, it's, you'll, you'll get what's going on the minute you look at it. So in the area of, let's look at fundraising tools. You're gonna need a donation portal. You just simply do. Um, you know, NGP Van, Act Blue, Democracy Engine, whatever, you simply have to have a way for people to give you money online. Uh, you're going to need a regulatory compliance and reporting tool. If you use Van, great, it all happens at once, but that's really critical. You know, Vote Builder as well. Um, it, it happens inside the tool. Catalyst, same deal. That's more used by unions, right? But I mean, you're going to need those things. You simply do. Um, you are going to need for field tools you're gonna need some kind of mapping or turf cutting tool, you know, if it's not already done. Or you can use minivan where it's already been pre-cut. But some field organizers really wanna cut the district their own way, I don't know. If you're at the lowest level, it probably doesn't matter, you're just gonna use minivan. But that's important, right? Um, yeah, event tools like Meetup, Eventbrite, you're probably gonna need something. Twitch now that we're online. Texting tools, I really recommend it. Even at the lowest levels, you will be shocked at what this does for your campaign. Let's talk about data tools, data analytics, modeling, what well, you have to have an NGP van, you know, tied to obviously, hopefully using minivan while you're canvassing, you know. Um, you're gonna need to manage voter and volunteer CRMs, right, you know. Um, messaging media tools, the simplest stuff, right? I mean, you're going to want to need an email management tool. You just need to blast something out, right, to your people en masse, right? If you've got a thousand emails, you should be emailing them, right? Um, content testing and optimization, should you run in a Facebook ad? Um, you're going to want to check out Google AdWords to see what actually happened. This is someone on your team, but you know, if you don't run a Facebook ad, you're probably not running a real campaign. <laughs> it's so easy, but just, you know, you got to just read the first couple pages of the chapter that we put in for Megan Clayson and you'll know how to do it. Social media, I, I mentioned Facebook, you need it at the very lowest levels. You probably want to look at Twitter as well, you know. Um, these are, I mean, for owned media, I mean, WordPress, SnapSite, just to have a website, right? Or, you know, if you really need to, you can go to Nation Builder or one of those that does the huge thing, but you don't need to. You just need to connect a free website to Act Blue so people can donate. I mean, that's the, those are the most basic things. I mean, you might need a place to get stock free images. That's Canva, right? You make an easy flyer on that. You just drag and drop stuff. Simple. For paid media tools, I mean, yeah, you're probably going to use Facebook and maybe run an ad on Google. Who knows, right? And then team organization, you know, that's the last area. I mean, probably Slack to manage your team and probably Zoom for meetings. That's it, right? I mean, that's, that's the basics. Um, what, I, what I think really flummoxes a lot of people is that there's 300 tools. So they're like, they either try to use all of them or none of them. <laughs> and they don't, nobody ever really broke this out, you know, into five bands and was like, in the lowest band, you're going to probably use eight to 12, you know, in the highest band, you're going to use 34 to 38. That's what we did. So, I mean, hopefully this is helpful to you, but I felt like people needed some kind of a roadmap in the wilderness, you know? I don't know. I would if I were running. 
We have just a few minutes left. Um, I do want to just ask, uh, you said that there was training available within the guide, right? Links to training. So, because I know some of these tools are probably brand new to a lot of us. Um, and I just want to make sure that, that uh, if they are new, that we can, we can get um, access to how to use them most effectively. I, so here's how I would view us. View Tech Yourself, the, the, the book, um, you know, and the eight pager for the pandemic, view that as your framework, your framework for how to organize and think about all of this. You will find that we break out all the tool types and make it super clear to know like which ones you're going to use and what combinations, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to using that tool, just literally Google how to use Snapchat, how to use Hustle. You will find a three minute video that will walk you through it. We're not going to redo that. Why would we redo that? These videos are great. They will show you eight screenshots. You will understand the tool in a second. Trust me, I'm an opera singer, right? I mean, that's the other thing I do. And a mother of eight-year-olds, I can build a tech company. You can build a tech company too. It is not hard stuff, but you have to do it. You have to sit down for at least, you know, I don't know, 10 of these. You've got to just Google and watch the online three-minute video about how it works. You'll get it in a second. Um, does that make sense? Because that's, and that's the other thing I'm saying, it's like, you know, you can read the chapter now of anything I've mentioned, but I, do, I don't have four hours to walk you through it here. I'm sorry. But I mean, you now have access to literally everything and then the addendum for the pandemic. So you just, I, you just have to read it. You know what I mean? But you'll, you'll be fine. Um, does that answer your question? <laughs> Did I wander? I don't know. Yeah. I'm pandemic brain here. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> uh, a little bit of pandemic brain. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much, Genevieve. I'm going to put your email in the chat box just for everybody here tonight, if that's all right. Um, Everyone, go get it. If you have any further questions, uh, feel free to reach out to her or myself. Um, like she said, you'll receive an email um, sometime in the next coming days with a link to the, to the guide that she discussed. Um, and if there's no other questions, I think we're going to wrap up here tonight. Again, thank you so much, Genevieve, um, for joining us here tonight. And thank you, everybody, for participating. Thanks, everyone. Go Rocket. Bye. <laughs>